giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Yeah, we're going to start with uh, with Granite State. Audrey is going to kick us off. All right. So Granite State Regional has traditionally been a key week one event for New England. Uh, but this one is one of the first years where it's been our only week one event. So we've got a bundle of classically great week one teams here to show off, starting with most notably Team 5687, the Outliers, who have won their first event every year except for 2016. And they've already proved that they're a force to be reckoned with this year. They won the official Week Zero event last week in Manchester. And the absolute craziest thing about this robot is that they're using a suction cup intake, which I've never really seen an FRC robot do successfully, uh, which makes this team really an outlier. Come on. <laughs> Boo. So next up, we've got uh, some of our week one favorites here. Team 88, TJ Squared, who had an absolutely incredible 2018 season. Uh, started off week one upset win against Team 15-19 at WPI last year. Um, and conversely, and uh, here to not lose tragically and not blue screen and not get caught on the scale is Team 15-19. Uh, while we didn't get to see them at the week zero this season like we normally do, uh, they're a perennial week one contender, and they're going to cause some mayhem this weekend. Shout outs also to Team 95, the Grasshoppers, with an excellent build thread on Chief Delphi. Uh, go check that out if you haven't already. It's phenomenal to look at. Uh, they look like they're ready to hop into the competition. Um, <laughs> you know I had oh. to start out strong this year, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Team 6328, Mechanical Advantage. Um, so they're a team that's going into their third year with uh, three blue banners already, and they're only looking to add to that. Uh, we've got Team 6329, Bucks Wrath, who built a beautiful Switch robot last year and aimed high this year with what looks like a really slick machine. Uh, team 4564, Orange Chaos, who in week one last year won the WPI district with 88. Uh, so this will be a good event. We've got some crazy teams, powerhouses, really good people who are building, really, yeah, people who are really good at building robots. And we've already seen some of those people uh, with gameplay from week zero here. Weather should be good. We've got a forecasted balmy 38 degrees for Saturday. Maybe some light snow showers in the mountains. So, you know, nice t-shirt, shorts weather. Libby, speaking of the weather, take us to a hopefully less snowy than last year Hapura Horsham. Absolutely. Uh, over in the first mid-Atlantic region, Hatboro Horsham is back on for week one. And with weather on the horizon for Friday, let's hope they don't meet the same fate as last year's only power down competition. Uh, teams to look out for at first mid-Atlantic's first run of the season. Uh, first off, we'll take a visitor from another nor'easterly region, 319. That's Big Bad Bob. They come from Alton, New Hampshire. Uh, it's always nice to see friendly faces from other districts in the mix, uh, and I'm pretty excited to see uh, what they bring over. Uh, Mar doesn't typically get a ton of visitors, and we've actually got a couple this year, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, of course, we've got our host team, 708. Uh, last year, they won the West Town District uh, in the power-up season. In the last couple of years, 708's been building really, really solid robots. And following along with their YouTube videos, uh, they do a weekly vlog, which I really like. Um, I love seeing video content from teams. It gives little glimpses into what they're up to. Um, haven't seen their whole robot. At least I have not seen it. Um, but uh, I'm sure it will be awesome. I, I think 708 always does something like a little bit different, but really solid at the same time. It's going to be great. I'm ready for it. Uh, and of course, they're putting all the effort into hosting the week one as well. So thank you, 708. Very cool of you guys. Uh, we've also got 1218. That's Vulcan Robotics. They always build crazy cool robots. Uh, they haven't seen a banner, though, since 2016. So let's see if this is going to be their year. Uh, looking at their reveal video, they've got kind of an all-purpose intake to handle 
all the game pieces with one mechanism. Um, and based on the video, like I said, their rocket looks rocket game looks pretty strong. Um, I'm always excited to see 12-18 hit the field. I think they're um, one of the teams uh, in MAR that always, sorry, First Minute Atlantic, I'm going to have to break that habit, um, in First Minute Atlantic <laughs> that, that brings, builds really strong, really clean robots. Um, I always like seeing 12-18. Um, 203 is also coming to Hapro Horsham. They are the super bots, uh, the sponsor Brick Campbell's. Uh, they have always had one of my favorite team <laughs> imageries of all time because it's just like their mascot's a soup can and they have the Campbell's logo. Um, all of the, you know, just the way mama made puns aside, they've been on a really strong upward trend in the last couple of seasons, really since 2014. Um, and I can't wait to see what 23 puts on the field. Uh, they also have, I would say, Mid Atlantic folks, uh, tell me in the chat if I'm wrong. They have the most spirit of any team that I've ever met. They are like the loudest, craziest, most spirited team. So they will be bringing some heat, even if it does happen to snow at Hapro Horsham. Um, also on the list for Hapro Horsham, we've got 5895 Petty School Robotics. Uh, they're actually from the team right down the road here in New Jersey. Uh, they've got a pink style arm this year. And despite their team's age in the 5,800 number, uh, there's a ton of experience on that team with some great mentors and now a full class of students who have been through the program and have, have competed. I'm always really inter interested to see what Petty brings to the table. Um, they actually brought home banners in each of their first two seasons, 2016 and 17, but they had a bit of a drought in 2018. So my guess would be they're looking to come home with something this season. And early play is a great way to do that. If you've got practice, if you've got some field time, even just at home, great way to, to kind of, Bring it home from week one. Uh, and my final kind of shout out for Hapro is going to be 103, one of our three Mid Atlantic Hall of Fame teams. It's always a joy to watch them play. Uh, they have actually teased a climb for their team as well, uh, their, their level three climb on their YouTube channel. So I know um, as another team who is iterating like crazy on that level three, it'll be interesting to see if they're in that still iterating club uh, in the words of the Wranglers, we'll have it when it matters. Uh, or if they're <laughs> in the, we'll to we're totally ready. Like, let's do this. You know, they've kind of got their practice down pot down pat. I think at this point in the season early enough, early on, especially um, that end game and especially getting an efficient and a quick end game is going to come down to practice. Uh, my bet would be that 103 has had a lot. They have a really awesome facility out there in Kentersville. So we'll have to see if it makes a difference. Um, I'm excited to watch. We'll be watching from the 103 shop and practice uh, 103. No, not that team. They're a competition. Watching from the 1923 shop <laughs> and practicing scouting. Who, what team am I on? I, I don't remember. Um, <laughs> we'll be watching. We're actually doing a, a practice scouting by watching week one from our own shop with all the kids that are traveling to our competition the next week. So um, we'll have game day open where you can catch all of the fun robot action. Speaking of some fun robot action, uh, we had three actual real life competitions uh, this past weekend at the week zero. Well, not this past weekend, the weekend before that. Anyway, uh, we had Regal Legal Rampage, which was a downstate New York event, Rochester Rally in upstate New York, and the official Week Zero event in New Hampshire. Were there any in um, First Mid Atlantic, Libby? I didn't catch um, any. There were not any official Week Zeros, at least not ones I heard of, but I know a bunch of teams, um, at least in our area in New Jersey, were just really open with their practice field. Um, in fact, uh, 303, who's a little bit away from us, just had like a Google Doc that was like, yeah, sign up for a slot. So a lot of teams um, in our region are just very, very open with their practice spaces, but we did not have a week zero per se. All right, cool. Well, we got to see a lot of cool gameplay. Um, so let's discuss kind of like what this game is played like, what style of robots are going to be good and what we learned from those week zeros. Yeah. Um, so watching week zero events was a little bit scattered uh, for me personally. We were in 1923 shop all weekend, obviously, like, that's the time that everyone is trying to crunch down on robots. Um, but from what I was watching and sort of watching back after the weekend, even including the caveat and the giant pile of salt, not just a grain of salt, but a huge pile that teams aren't all the way built yet at a week zero. They're still getting practice. It might be the first time they've actually really run their robot on the full field. Um, match cycling still looked pretty slow for me. I watched the New Hampshire one. Um I think there's a lot of shakeout that still needs to happen with robot mechanisms, so I can't assign it all to just game play. Um, but that's part of the usual re reasons a lot of people won't play. Right? It's like <laughs> I haven't had enough time yet. I, 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 You're breaking up a little bit, Libby. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> um,
All right. Well, I'm really hoping that in week one, even week two, as we get into it, uh, that teams who aren't yet secure in their high mechanisms try to keep it. Uh, am I good? Am I bad? Rip. Yes, am I? Have I returned? Uh. <laughs> uh. You're good now. Okay, I guess we're good. Sorry about that. I guess the robots came for me. Um, but <laughs> I'm really hoping that the teams who aren't secure in their high mechanisms uh, try to keep it low. Obviously, that rocket ranking point is important and exciting and like the thing you might want to do. But every season comes down to practice, and this is such a careful placement game that I don't know that a lot of teams are practiced enough to get the rocket on their own yet, or even necessarily in a lot of their qual matches with their partners. Yeah, um, I super agree I think, with you on that point. I think cycles are going to be super, super slow. Um, this game is going to be a lot about alliance coordination, just with the way the field is laid out, right? Um, not only with the fact that you're scoring sort of 90 degrees to what you can see, but also because of the big you know, minivan looking nonsense in the middle of the field that I think teams are not paying attention to, but like it does take up the entire center of the field, right? There's a, a ton of sort of like weird lanes and spaces you can take up on the field. I get the sense that week one, especially there's going to be a lot of, with no one knowing how the field really feels yet. Um, there's going to be a lot of bumping into your Alliance partners, right? Cycles are going to be super mega slow. I just think teams that aren't, super, super confident, or maybe that are self-aware, <laughs> that are self-aware in their rocket ability. Maybe we won't do confident, we'll do self-aware. Um, should think about getting points and staying low versus like, and get it doing that quickly. Um, I think that's gonna be important. It feels really fun and cool to like jump in and do the high stuff and do the crazy stuff. But while teams don't know quite how the field feels yet, I hope that teams are a little more self-aware of what their ability could shake out to be. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, watching reveal videos, I saw um, lots of teams going uh, with a higher elevator, and maybe that's just because of their experience with an elevator from last year or what they saw other teams doing last year. But this, and especially in the first weeks, it's going to be all those low hatches and all the low uh, cargo that are in there. There's so many points available that are just at that height, and we're going to see a lot of teams overreaching. Um, that rocket ranking point is pretty good, but a lot of teams also design for that level three climb, and that's going to be what really distinguishes who ranks high at events. Um, I was at the Manchester Weekly Zero event. It was a fun time. Uh, one of the things that I noticed, though, was that um, Team 58 was the only team there with a finished and working level three climb. They ranked second. The team that ranked first was uh, one of the teams that had a match with them where they got that level three climb. So those ranking points are going to be huge. Um, and if you can do it consistently, you're going to rank high. So the teams that do have that ready are going to rank high. But does that mean they're good at panels? Does that mean they're good at cargo? Um, it's really a toss up. And I think we're going to see a lot of interesting alliances where maybe one team was focusing on doing level three the entire time and can't even manipulate patches or, or hatches or cargo patches i'm calling patches. them patches now i've decided they're patches patch handles yeah patch, patch handles i like it <laughs> no i i totally agree i think what's interesting is if you'd rewound us to like kickoff ish we all would have been like oh no everyone's gonna be able to get to the rocket like it's gonna be super super easy and like oh my god that climb is so hard and now that we see what robots look like it's like yeah the climb's still really hard like can confirm climb is still really <laughs> hard <laughs> but i'm so surprised at the number of different options that teams came up with to be able to do the level three and i really think you're, you're on the money here where the climbs are going to make more ranking points early on than and then later in the season i think teams are going to catch up at being able to speed through the rocket mm -hmm. for sure um, but we're excited to watch it. We'll have to see what I'm happens. Absolutely excited to watch it. Very and excited after, to see where this goes. <laughs> and after we watch it, we're going, of course, as usual. Oh, hey, I like that robot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just caught up with, with what was on the screen. Um, I think that um, after we watch all those webcasts on, on game day, uh, we're going to have to go vote uh, in the top 25. So 
Uh, I guess we're just going to go back and forth for a second here and chat, chime in as well with who stands out to you. Uh, who, Otter, do you think we're going to see in the top 25 this season? Who's got the best reveals? Who are we Who are we looking out for? And who do we think is going to be in that top 25 list? All right. We've got one, like, probably for sure going to be in there. It's Team 195, the Cyber Knights. Uh, they've already put out a teaser uh, this season. Uh, really nice shots of their robot just, like, glazing over it. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, I heard they're a bit behind, but, you know, they're that kind of team that can show up to a week one with, or I don't think they're going to a week one this year. They're not. Um, their first event with a robot that doesn't even work and end up with a blue banner at the end of the event. Um, they're very pretty this year, and I have the confidence that they are going to make top 25 and probably be the number one rank in that. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I'm going to focus on Mid-Atlantic because that's where I live and it's the only thing I've had the energy to pay attention to. <laughs> um, in, in Mar, I've heard some first Mid-Atlantic. One day I'll get it right. Um, <laughs> I've heard some sneaky good things about 25. I've loved watching uh, a little bit of 341's progress just through like, you know, knowing people on the internet. Um, 25 and 341, I've heard are both pretty solid. I'm looking forward to them. Um, 11 looks pretty good this year. Their teaser had, like, everything looked pretty nice. Um, 11 taking a departure from the usual aesthetic to go for their other school color. They're normally yellow. They went with red this year. Kind of weird, but, you know, you got to shake it up every once in a while. Um, specifically this week, I'm hoping that we see uh, some more strength out of the Mid-Atlantic, probably from the usual suspects. Um, I guess to be 708, 1218, and 103. So first Mid-Atlantic folks, come on and get the vote out after week one. Once you're done watching and the poll opens up, make sure uh, you come check it out. Let's see uh, Team Dumpster Fire, I mean Team Mar up on the top 25 <laughs> list. That is what I'm hoping for. Oh, yep. I shaker to Einstein confirmed. Let's see what the chat has to say. We're looking for yeah. 195 video. Nice. Uh, shaker Team 2791. Yep. Yeah. Uh, they're absolutely phenomenal team from new york that's only been getting better in the next um the last few years they're just the next incredible few years we're predicting <laughs> all the way into 2022 we're ready um they have a <laughs> solid robot um i've seen it it's really cool um it's really flashy um they're just gonna do phenomenal and they're practicing at the practice field they're gonna do great um also shout out to 694 who mm -hmm. had a really, really cool climb, although it kind of sucked. Um, they got a suction cup on a stick. It extends Ooh. down, and they pull themselves <laughs> up. <laughs> um, one of my favorite climbs so far, just because it's, uh, it's, it's innovative. I, I haven't seen yeah. one that's like it yet. It's, it's something the crazy, and it works. <laughs> the funniest thing about that is when, so for, like, speaking from 1923, when we put our teaser out and we hid what was touching the platforms um like with dumpster fires because team dumpster fire um <laughs> everyone was guessing suction cups we were like oh my god it's suction cups it has to be there's no way you can like not react off of this like whatever and our our kids were all sitting in the shop we're like laughing we're like we would who would use suction cups like that's yeah. so silly and that's what that we saw 694 yeah we saw 694's video and we were like Honestly, we need to consider because right now with with our forks, we need somebody on top of them to obviously to go up. So now we're like, how can we get the 694 suction cup on the bottom of the mechanism that we have just so we can like do it all? Like even if no one comes up with us, like can we do it all? So uh definitely shouts to 694. I know there's some some chat shout outs to 3015 as well as 340. Um just a couple of great New York teams. We don't have New York events on the calendar yet, so we're not doing our previews just yet, but we'll have them on future region recaps. New York is great. New York is great. Um, <laughs> I make I may come visit some New York events uh, just because they'll be local. So we'll have nice. to we'll have to go say hello. Um, however, as great as our region is, because we are the best region, obviously, uh, <laughs> we're going to move on and let some of the other shows have a little bit of the spotlight. So thank you guys to everybody who has watched. If you want more First Robotics in your life and you like what First Updates Now does, all that we ask is that you let others know about the show and that this is the place you want to go for some FRC recap. Um, you got a few bucks, whether it's subs, bits, hosts, all that kind of good stuff. The support here on Twitch 
is awesome. We appreciate it. Uh, no matter what you do, uh, we are delighted to have you on board here in first up in the first updates now nation community, uh, whatever we are, cult, um, any of those things. <laughs> Let's call it those. On behalf of myself and on Audrey, the rest of the Northeast team, as well as our producer, Tyler, I uh, want to thank you for tuning in. Thank you to all the mods in chat. Uh, our next show is the Southeast region. And I can't remember because last year they were Southern Fried. And now I think they're like sweet tea or something like the Southeast <laughs> guys. Um, so go check them out. Give their uh, broadcast some love as well right here on the same channel. We'll see you in a couple minutes there. And we'll talk to you next, next week on Northeast Recap. Bye. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.